Okay, so today we're going to be talking about different types of malware because I think a lot of you have been susceptible. Did I say that right? I think all of you have been a victim of malware. Most of us have been a victim of malware. If you were somebody like myself who used LimeWire, I think there was another one we used to download back in the day to stream or to download music illegally which is not right and a lot of us got viruses worms malware stuff like that and today i'm going to teach you about different types of malware let's see how many i have here one two three four five six seven eight nine nine types of malware i'm doing like i said i don't know if i said this in the previous video i think I did. whoops i said i was going to go through this book and teach you guys like certain sections in this book that i think many people would benefit from because not a lot of people know about cybersecurity and the basics and the 101 so i'm using this cybersecurity for dummies but i'm calling it my series cybersecurity for beginners because i don't like how they say for dummies i think that's so nasty and rude and this is kind of gonna be like a series i guess but i'm kind of switching it up and from chapter one which is this chapter, i think it's understanding the cybersecurity landscape from this chapter i wrote a bunch of notes that i was originally going to use for the original video that i filmed but i didn't like how it came out so I'm not going to go through the whole chapter. I'm just going to take notes out of them and post them on my blog about like what I learned so you guys can go through it. So if you want to check out the rest of the notes on this chapter, it's in the blog post below. But I'm just going to be taking like sections from the chapter, each chapter that's the most interesting to me and turning it into a video. So the first one is, um, oh, so let's discuss what malware is malware is basically like what we said on the computer not the computer on twitter it's like the clap for your computer your phone and i said this in a big in a video before how malware is basically like diseases for devices so you have disease in the top umbrella and then malware is here and then breaking off of disease would be like chlamydia all the t different types of stds hiv aids herpes uh what else there's like so many of them and then malware is like synonymous with disease so then you with malware you have adware backdoors boot kits logic bombs root kits spyware trojan horses viruses and worms so those are all the ones that we're gonna talk about today and I'm gonna tell you guys what each of them do and how to protect against them now before we hop into this I just want to say that I got a lot of this information from the malware bytes website it's a anti-malware scanning tool that my school used to recommend to me a lot throughout my entire time as an undergrad and I gave myself a scan last night and I'm a MacBook girl I'm an Apple girl we are one of the systems that rarely get malware because not a lot of people use Apple and cyber criminals are still making what they we call now advanced persistent threats they're not really doing like small script kitty and small hacks anymore they're trying to get the bag there a lot of them are still making malware for windows machines if you have a windows machine if you have an android you're just more susceptible to get attacked rather than us apple users okay like <laughs> get with the winning team so the first one that we're going to talk about is mrs or mr whatever you want to refer to them as adware it is an unwanted software designed to throw advertisements 
up on your screen most of them are within your web browser and it generates revenue for its developer or the cyber criminal cyber criminal by automatically displaying online advertisements in the user interface of the software or on a screen that pops up in the user's face during installation process i'll give you an example of what this may look like it may look like this like you'll be just searching minding your business on your laptop or on your phone your android and an ad will pop up you'll have like these random ads just popping up they'll pop up in your browser it's not like when you go to a website and you'll have an ad it'll pop up the ad will literally pop up on your desktop i've had this before and i'm like where are these coming from and come to find out it was adware when i scanned my machine i found out that i had adware and when i scanned it and cleaned it it was gone the signs of adware the first one like i just said you'll start seeing ads you're gonna see things like weird you have a virus you need to click here to clean it that's a sign you might experience when you're in your browser just random tabs just opening up your home page just randomly changes you, you might see that findings from your search engine that you have never heard of a redirect to a nsfw website so not safe for work so if you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing at work you could be directed to a not safe for work website and infect everybody okay so be careful we're gonna get into a lot of like a lot of these types of malware are from users being just reckless on the internet y'all are some reckless people okay y'all are reckless another one is your browser crashes or is slow it's not like apple where it crashes because they're updating the software the os and they just want you to buy a new one because they're not patching and updating the previous os anymore they're working on the new one so you'll notice they'll start slowing down on the previous one it's not like this this is like you're on your new os your new update and it's just crashing for no reason it's being slow for no reason you might have adware okay you might have any of these because like i said any of these can slow down your system and just start making your computer or phone spaz out for no reason well it is a reason it's malware <laughs> so what to do when you get this uh you want to back up your files and then you want to run malware bytes to scan your computer and clean it all your fave anti-malware antivirus you know vpn all of them are going to be coming to the digital empress to market them so malware bites you're welcome i'm sending them to you because i love you okay the next one is back doors there's another one that sounds kind of like a back door that we're going to eventually get into but they're two separate things and i'm going to make sure when we get to that one i'm going to differentiate how they're different because it can be kind of confusing because they sound like the same it could be put in by software developers to kind of go in and fix code and fix different you know things in the app or the software or the system but in this case we're going to think of it as something malicious it's a method by which unauthorized and unauthorized users are able to get around normal security measures and gain high level access or user access aka root access on a computer system a network or a software application so yeah anybody can have a backdoor not just software developers hackers pen testers anybody that works in the tech department can have a backdoor in any type part of the network the tech anything once they're in as far as like cyber criminals they can use the backdoor to steal personal and financial data. They can install additional malware, hijack devices. Usually when we talk about backdoors, it's usually reference to the disgruntled employee. We always hear about these scenarios when we're in school or you're on a course online. They say the disgruntled employee goes and he knows or he or she knows she's about to he they're about to get fired and so what they do is they go and sneak in the tech 
room or they always log into somewhere, some tech that they're working on, some software that they're working on and make a secret back door that nobody knows about. They'll leave this here and once they get fired or they leave, there's pl been plenty of times I could have been a disgruntled employee and put a back door, but I didn't. I didn't want to, you know, go to jail. Because <laughs> you can't go to jail. You can go to jail for doing this stuff. So all of y'all that keep asking me, can you hack this for me? No. Go in and they do this. So when they leave, they can log in through this back door and install malware. They can steal data. They can steal money. They can steal all types of stuff. That's what a backdoor is. Signs of a backdoor. It's, it's difficult to identify and protect against these because they're hidden and work silently. But you might start noticing files missing, slow performance, and your system just doesn't behave right. So if you're on it and it's just acting irregular, you might have a backdoor. What to do to protect against these? You want to change your default passwords and please, please, please stop setting your passwords to password. Stop setting them to just numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know a lot of websites and apps and stuff don't let you set your passwords weak. They have the weak to strong algorithm for passwords. So the login can tell you if it's, or the sign up form can tell you if it's weak or strong enough for your account so y'all can't get away with that anymore if it's too weak but still even make sure your password is i would say a good few beginners eight but if you want to be extra secure 12 characters and make sure it has numbers letters and that's uppercase and lowercase special characters or you could get a password manager if you don't feel like using your brain. If your brain and memory is not as good as mine, you can just get a password manager and keep record of your passwords there. And what you want to do is you want to monitor network activity. This is something that I would do if I was on the job. Choose applications and plugins carefully and use a good cybersecurity solution like malware bytes. The next one. Now, I didn't know about these until I read this book and I found I thought there was just boot, I mean, root kits. Then I found out about boot kits. I didn't know these existed, but boot kits is a type of malicious infection which targets the master boot record. This is located on the physical motherboard of your computer. It attaches malicious software in this manner and can allow for a malicious program to be executed prior to the loading of the operating system. It cannot be detected by standard operating system processes because all the components reside outside of the Windows file system. And boot kit infections are on the decline with the increased adoption of modern operating systems and hardware utilized utilizing uefi and secure boot technologies i remember setting up secure boot all the time when i was a help desk analysis and they would always i didn't know why at the time why they were constantly making us turn on secure boot you made sure to configure the bios the right way so that it boots up right and it's the most secure and i guess this is the reason why they had us doing this i didn't know that signs of a boot kit it causes system instability and the result of the infamous blue screen or the famous blue screen or an inability to launch the operating system so you like i say you won't even be able to get in the operating system may display a warning and demand payment via digital currency to restore the computer to the operational capacity and my word bite says don't ever pay these just get a new computer or restore the whole computer source of infections is usually floppy disks which we don't use anymore and other bootable media such as usbs but what to do to get rid of a boot kit you guessed it use malware bytes to scan and get rid of it you could use another fave of anti-malware software to clear it out so it may not be malware bytes you may have your favorite one whichever just make sure that 
you're clean and you're set. Next one is a logic bomb. It's gotten dark, but I love how my iPad is like giving me spotlight. 